this humdinger of a story in the Southeastern Conference, attorneys for Lane Kiffin, that's a college football coach at Ole Miss, have filed legal papers to dismiss a pending lawsuit. There was a player that filed a lawsuit, defensive tackle DeSanto Rollins. Never heard of him. Uh, But this cat said that he was kicked off the Ole Miss team for missing practices, okay, his missing practices and meetings. He says he had a mental health crisis. Now, he's suing the university. This seems pretty reasonable. He's suing Lane Kiffin for $10 million in compensatory damages. He would also like $30 million in punitive damages. He's playing the race card from the bottom of the deck. Now, the bombshell here, the player recorded in, in Apparently in Mississippi, you are allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do this in a lot of states. Uh, it depends on your jurisdiction. But in Mississippi, apparently this is allowed. The player was wired and recorded Lane Kiffin without the coach's knowledge. And the audio was leaked. And it's amazing. It's unreal audio. This is from uh, Front Office Sports, a sports business website. They got the audio first. And rather than me do the play-by-play on this, just sit back and enjoy. This is a private conversation between the head coach of the Ole Miss football team and a player named DeSanto Rollins. Let's go to the audio tape. If you would have come here, when you kept getting messages, the head coach wants to talk to you, and you saying, I'm not ready to talk to him. I wasn't. Well, what f-ing world do you live in? I don't see why you got to be disrespectful, honestly. Get out of here. Go. Go. You're off the team. You're done. See ya. See ya. Because I'm... See ya. Go. Go. And guess what? We can kick you off the team. So go read your f***ing rights about mental health. We can kick you off the team for not showing up. When the head coach has to meet with you and you don't show up for weeks, okay, we can remove you from the team. It's called being the f***. It's called hiding behind and not showing up to work. Whoa! Spicy. Bam! Boom! Now, what do you think the reaction has been from the Wokesters? Yes, uh, they are outraged, right? Uh, this is uh, Lane Kiffin is, has been barbecued. Uh, you're unsympathetic. You don't appreciate mental health. What's wrong with you? Uh, so I want to discuss the question. Old Miss football coach Lane Kiffin under fire for the leaked audio. Which way are you leaning on this story? So I have a bad poker face. I, I am smiling from ear to ear. I have a Cheshire cat smile for Lane Kiffin. I'm on Team Kiffin on this one. I've got Skunk, Sleepy Hollow, and Chardonnay. And we will lock all of these things together, and we are going to make a stool pigeon, which is uh, which is what uh, this DeSanto Rollins uh, is. Uh, I, I give Lane uh, Kiffin a, a major thumbs up on this. Uh, I do. Uh, number one. Number one. Uh, the, the player was trying to get the dirt to win money from Lane Kiffin. The reason that conversation was recorded, it was a money grab. And while Lane Kiffin was loud, I say bravo. This was a breath of fresh air. I don't think he was out of bounds on what he said. Over the years, we have been very critical of Lane Kiffin on this show. Uh, Really was upset when he coached SC. Uh, We approved of him being fired at the airport. But eavesdropping in, on this conversation, the, the way it was handled, uh, I, I, I thought it was a master class. Lane Kiffin was the adult in the room. There's, there's zero accountability for so many people in this world uh, today. And here he's got an athlete that didn't show up to practice, did not contact the coach for multiple weeks. The, you know, Matt, can you imagine ghosting your head coach and thinking that's not a problem? Like Even if you've got some mental health uh, issues you're dealing with, you still have to communicate. You know, in what world, what civilized world are you allowed to just vanish? And did Lane Kiffin read him the riot act? Absolutely. The, the, the full audio, we played a clip of it. But when he said, you know, what, what in the effing world, what effing world do you live in? It was wonderful. It was great. And, and then he, uh, I'll clean up the language because we're on radio. There's a lot of kids listening here in the middle of the night. Uh, he said it's called being a 
pussy cat, shall we say. And then he said, this was my favorite line. It's called hiding behind poopy. Uh, he said the S word and, and not showing up to work. Lane Kiffin used his schnazola on this one. If it smells like a skunk, it's probably a skunk. And the, the mental health excuse is the number one get out of any kind of accountability in your life card today. We saw it with Ben Simmons in the NBA where he took like two years off, couldn't play, and, and, and all that. You're never allowed to question it. It is verboten if you question the credibility of someone who makes that claim. And what Lane Kiffin did is he took his harpoon gun out and said, ha ha, uh, and I say for Ole Miss, give this man an extension. I loved it, especially considering the player was trying to bait him. It's like the, it was like a, not the same example, but I used to love this TV show. I don't think it's on anymore. Called bait, it was called Bait Car, uh, and I think it was fake, but I loved the concept of it, right? They'd leave a car unlocked on the street and wait for some dumbass to go you know, steal the car, and then they'd, you know, they'd, they'd follow them and arrest them. And all. Anyway, uh, now page two here. We move away from Oxford, Mississippi. We go headline Miami, 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 where Tyreek Hill, has dropped a drive-by hot take on his fledgling podcast. The Cheetah has declared that the Dolphins' signal caller has become a franchise quarterback. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Uh, yes, here we are in November of 2023, and Tua Tungavailoa is a franchise quarterback. Quote, seeing how much he, meaning Tua, has taken ownership of that position, and not just quarterback, franchise quarterback. It's a beautiful thing, close quote, from Tua talking about Lois' number one fan, Tyreek Hill. Question, uh, are you convinced that Tua Tungavailoa is now the Dolphins' franchise quarterback? And after a minutes-long, minutes-long investigation, the answer here is No! Uh, the answer is no. Tua Tungavailoa is still floating around the twilight zone. It's a gray area. Like, Tua's got some really sexy stats. If you're into stats, if you get all horny over stats, you're excited about Tua Tungavailoa. I look at that, and I say there's a lot of empty calories here. He didn't validate it. I look at those numbers. I say those are sleepy, hollow stats. They're sleepy, and they're hollow. And, and when he got the opportunity, He's had three games against teams we assume are good. Now, Buffalo right now is a terrible team. They're not a playoff team in the moment. But at the time, they were considered a heavyweight. And so the Dolphins have played the Chiefs. They played them last week in Frankfurt, Germany. Played the Eagles in Philly and the Bills in Buffalo. In those three games, all right, big game hunting. Big game hunting. And Tua has been on a starvation diet. Tongue of Iloa against the Chiefs, Eagles, and Bills has a passer rating below 90, his average yards per attempt below 7, which is average. He's just another jabroni. That's all he is. Garbage in, garbage out. And so to say, I understand why the cheetah does it. Right? He's trying to pump the tires on his guy and get him a little bit of money and all that. And Tonga Bailoa has been able to avoid injury, which is, a big upset. If, if you told me before the year that we'd be sitting here in weekend 10 of the NFL season and Tua Tungabailoa would not end up in the injury tent missing games, I would have said, oh, you're a loser. I'll take that bet. He's going to miss some time. But he hasn't. So I will concede that that is a surprise. But in this chapter of the book, as I'm reading the book, Tua Tungabailoa is in the Jared Goff category of quarterbacks. Brock Purdy, system quarterback, not the epitome of a franchise guy. All right, final point. Headline from the blogosphere, several, uh, several eagle-eyed consumers of overnight talk radio reached out to me. Did you see? Have you seen? Oh, you've got to be embarrassed. We tried to tell you. Why would they do this? Uh, all of this over a video which is claiming to show James Harden partying hard after the Clippers lost in Brooklyn. The video has gone viral on some of the NBA social media sites. 
and it's bouncing all over the pinball machine. So the question, should the Clippers be worried about James Harden partying after a loss? And the answer on this one is uh, a simple no for multiple reasons. The latest video, I did some investigating. The latest video is a Chardonnay. The James Harden video is a Chardonnay. It's old wine in a new bottle. That video is not recent. Now, that video is dated. It was repackaged for clicks, clickety-click, and clout. Now, that being said, I don't doubt that James Harden was out partying in New York after losses because that's what he does, right? Can a zebra change its stripes? No! You traded for James Harden. You know what you're getting. Right? It's kind of like if you date a porn star, you can't be shocked if the porn star is uh, stooping around on you, right? It's part of the beard experience. So you got to deal with it. Now you got to hope that Harden is not completely washed up. He hasn't been good in the fourth quarter of these first two games for the Clippers. That's a small sample size. Regular season NBA. Uh, we, we're not going to really pay attention to this in full until the playoffs come around, which are in April. It's a long way away. 